بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله نحمده ونصلي ونسلم على رسوله الكريم Welcome to the continued the continued tafsir of Surah Al-Baqarah and we're starting from verse 54 today um, and the story continues about the Bani Israel known as the children of Israel and last time we just mentioned about Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam and the different prophets of the children of Israel where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has instructed them to follow their prophets uh, to seek help and for us as well to seek help with sabr and with prayer وَاسْتَعِينُوا بِالصَّبْرِ وَالصَّلَامِ we explain sabr it's not just patience, it's, uh, it's got a huge meaning, it's resilience, internal strength, perseverance, etc. And we also uh, talked about that uh, the certainty of meeting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and returning to Him is part of the faith. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding the children of Israel of the huge favors He has, he has uh, given them and uh, how he saved, for example, them from Fir'aun uh, how Fir'aun was really uh, torturing the whole community terrorizing the whole community and this is a big trial but Allah Azza wa Jal he saved them from him and from his army and how he parted the seas and how Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam for 40 nights he left them to do uh, personal worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and during that time the fitna started amongst their pe his people and while he was given the Torah they began to worship a calf so that that's where we begin uh, we re-begin this this tafsir so from verse 54 أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم وإذ قال موسى لقومه يا قوم إنكم ظلمتم أنفسكم باتخاذكم العجل فتوبوا إلى بارئكم فاقتلوا أنفسكم ذلكم خير لكم عند بارئكم فتاب عليكم إنه هو التواب الرحيم and وإذ and when and we have explained this means remember when Moses said to his people oh my people you have indeed sinned as you took the calf for worship so turn in repentance meaning turn to Allah in repentance and then Allah Azza wa Jal says فَاقْتُلُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ kill yourselves execute yourselves murder yourselves for that is better for you with your Lord then he turned towards you certainly he is the most returning of forgiveness, the most merciful. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Innahu huwa tawwabur rahim, he is the most returning, he returns forgiveness when you when you approach him. Now the punishment for openly worshipping an idol which they made with their hand, which they made practically in front of Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam after being shown miracle after miracle after being saved and then turning against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the most uh, dis disgraceful way the most um, evil way because Allah azza wa jalla he hates he has extreme dislike for a shirk that if you die if you die upon shirk if you die upon shirk then you won't be forgiven but despite this Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said look I will forgive you but there are conditions now there are requirements there are prerequisites now to my forgiveness after what you've done after seeing a prophet Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam after seeing these miracles and now you are doing this what um, uh, what treachery actually so this is actually a very dark chapter in, in this story because the, the, what the Mufassirun say that a, a cloud came over the people and 
they were lined in front of each other and when the cloud came over them the whole place was darkened then they were required to just kill each other to fight each other some of us say that people were sent actually to execute them and this carried on and carried on until uh, it was said to them enough so many many were executed like this uh, this is a sentence of death actually and its execution if under their law for which Allah Azza wa Jal did say now you have to kill yourself but this is the way now after what you have done this is the way that we uh, we can forgive you but you, you can't escape uh, a punishment now and this was only for those who actively involved themselves in this worship there were uh, a large part or uh, a part of the community they never engaged in this they rejected this and they watched in horror as you know the their fellow uh, tribe began to form and, and worship this cow and indulge in the haram so this is a very uh, very uh, dark chapter in in this uh, in this history and it's a message from for all of us actually that once we accept the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we reject all false deities we say la no to all false deities la ilaha there's no deity nothing to be worshipped and served illallah except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that's why the kalima tayyibah begins with la and um, this is a very uh, very very uh, terrifying and very real message actually um, now what we find is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses if we go into a little bit of language now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses a one of his names uh, in this verse and he uses um, he uses bari'ikum now bari'ikum is from al-bari and this it means maker not creator khalik means creator and this maker means the maker of laws and actions and the one who can change these laws and change these actions so so this is uh, this is just one verse showing a whole story actually and this is typical of surah al-baqarah one verse is so rich in historical meaning so now we we come to a a, a different occasion now in verse 55 وَإِذْ قُلْتُمْ يَا مُوسَى لَنْ نُؤْمِنَ لَكَ حَتَّى نَرَى اللَّهَ جَهْرَةً فَأَخَذَتْكُمُ الصَّاعِقَةُ وَأَنْتُمْ تَنْذُرُونَ and remember again when you said there are people who said to Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam we will never believe in you until we see Allah clearly so what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did he just sent a thunderbolt to them and they all I'm not sure if all but many of them died and, and the Mufassirun say 70 people were picked by Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam who had this um, this very uh, insulting very insulting uh, requirement actually you know Musa alayhi salam is in front of them he's declaring Tawheed he's declaring Allah he's showing them miracle after miracle and yet then they come up with this question show us Allah we won't believe in him it's almost making a mockery of uh, religion of belief of Iman and just making excuses and demands unnecessary and unsubstantiated and unreasonable demands on the, one of the greatest prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, it is a, a legal duty to believe in the prophet once he announces himself actually so um, it is said that 70 people were picked by Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam who used to say he used to say this who, who made these demands then Allah Azza wa Jal sent a bolt of lightning and although I've written incapacitated they were actually uh, killed by this thunderbolt so but uh, Musa alayhi salam was it is said that he was made unconscious he didn't actually die because he was spiritually very powerful but the people with him were actually they they were killed, and Allah Azza wa Jal, they he, actually even their souls were taken, and then Allah Subhanahu wa Taala uh, returned their souls so they could live the remainder of their lives as an example 
look uh, you wanted this now sh now see the full effect you can't even uh, witness a thunderbolt you can't even witness a lightning and you wish to see the creator of this you know uh, and Allah wants to send a message that uh, this is not possible uh, in this way of course it is possible for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for us to see him for example on the day of judgment it will be possible in Jannah it will be possible there are many a hadith on this yes. uh, even there is a chronic verse um, that um, some faces will be beaming some faces will be shining looking towards their Lord so we will be seeing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as the Prophet said sallallahu alayhi wa sallam like the full moon so if Allah wants to make it possible of course it's, it's, it's possible but with this unreasonable demand Allah is setting an example you should not be asking this question like this he's showing you he is announcing his prophethood he's a trustworthy individual most trustworthy amongst you miracle after miracle prophet after prophet and now you ask this question and verse 56 just confirms ثُمَّ مِّن بَعْدِ مَوْتِكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ so then we revived you so this shows that they were killed they did die and they Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, revived them so Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam was rendered unconscious but the other people uh, were actually actually died verse 57 وَذَلَّلْنَا عَلَيْكُمُ الْغَمَامَ وَأَنزَلْنَا عَلَيْكُمُ الْمَنَّ وَالسَّلْوَى كُلُوا مِنْ طَيِّبَاتِ مَا رَزَقْنَاكُمْ وَمَا ظَلَمُونَا وَلَكِنْ كَانُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ يَظْلِمُونَ And we shaded you with clouds and we sent you manna which is a sweet refreshment and salwa which people have translated as quails and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says uh, He says Kulu, eat min tayyibat from the pure nourishment I, I am sending you that we have provided you and then he says they didn't harm us in any way meaning with their ingratitude but they harm themselves now this again is one whole story basically basically, basically what happened was um, they were ordered this particular group were ordered to enter into a town of tyrants and they were ordered to fight with the tyrants and most of them refused most of them refused so what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did he basically sent them around the same patch of desert for 40 years as punishment so they, they traveled during the day and at night time they camped and when they woke up in the morning they found themselves in the same position as they were the, the, the day before so they went, they went, they traveled the whole day they camped at night time, when they woke up in the morning they found themselves in the same position as they were the previous morning so this is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala punished them and this happened, this happened for 40 years because they refused this instruction, this order from uh, their, their prophet um, and but then then that wasn't enough because they actually uh, made demands on the prophet okay they said what what food can we eat you know your lord <laughs> your lord has made us has punishing us like this there's no this is a desert there's no food to eat so then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his mercy he sent them manna and salva he sent them uh, quails people have said quails and he sent also a sweet refreshment and then, then they said, what about the heat? We're suffering from the heat. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's why he says, we shaded you with clouds. And then they said, what about light? At night time and in the dark and like this. And then, then it is said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent them a pillar uh, which was burning of fire. And that was their light. And what about water? What about water? And then uh, we find that uh, Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam he struck his staff on a rock and 12 springs of water gushed from that rock and that rock was a, a four-sided rock like a sheep's head so there, there were three springs 
per side. Look how much detail the Mufassirun go into Subhanallah. Then they was asked, what about our clothes? We, <laughs> we need to have clothes. So what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did, he, he gave everyone the miracle where their clothes w would not wear out and would almost like self-repair themselves. And what about the children's clothes? Remember this was for 40 years. Again, he made a miracle whereby the as the children grew, their clothes grew with them. So miracle after miracle, and this is after they've refused a direct order from their Prophet alayhi salam. Um, and even then they were ungrateful as, as we are about to see. Even then they were un dissatisfied. And just, just for your information, sometimes people, uh, they, they say manna was truffles and some people say salva was, wasn't just quails, it could have been honey. No, it's a slight disagreement, but the majority say it was a, a very delicious type of bird and you know, pe most people say quails. And manna was some sort of sweet dish or some sweet. And this all came from the sky. Subhanallah. And what they found was if they tried to store it, it would go off. You know, if they collected too much and thought think they they could store it for the next day, it would actually go off. Except for the Friday, because their Sabbath was a Saturday. So when they stored it on the Friday, because they weren't allowed to collect on the Sabbath. So when they stored it on Friday it wouldn't go off. Look how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is blessing them day after day after day. And this is after they refused this particular instruction. So again, another verse with a whole rich story behind it. And now we go into 58. Again, another another story. And this goes over a couple of verses, I believe. وَإِذْ قُلْنَا دْخُلُوا هَذِهِ الْقَرْيَةَ فَكُلُوا مِنْهَا حَيْثُ شِئْتُمْ رَغَدًا وَادْخُلُوا الْبَابَ سُجَّدًا وَقُولُوا حِطَّةٌ نَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ خطاياكم وس وسنزيد المحسنين. And remember when we said, enter this town and eat wherever you wish and as much as you like. And enter the the entrance of the town, i.e., the gate, prostrating. In other words, humbling yourself and asking forgiveness for your sins. Actually, he was saying, say hitta, hitta, which we'll come on to. And we will increase the rewards for those who do act in a righteous manner. So, وَقُولُوا um, حِطَّةٌ So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, as you enter this town, say this, حِطَّةٌ 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 which is, has been translated as asking for forgiveness. Um, so, you must say this in a very humble way. But what, what was happening is, a they, they, number of them refused to say that actually. And they did refuse to go in a very humble way, you know, like going into sajda or going into ruku, like this, very, very humbly. They refused to do that. A very simple instruction. And they used to change, they changed the word hitta to uh, hinta. They added the noon, and some people even say they said habba, which is grain. So um, they, they, they just took a mockery of this instruction. So what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did as a result فَبَدَّلَ الَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا قَوْلًا غَيْرَ الَّذِي يَقِيلَ لَهُمْ فَأَنزَلْنَا عَلَى الَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا رِجْزًا مِنَ السَّمَاءِ بِمَا كَانُوا يَفْسُقُونَ So there were those who sinned and they substituted the words. The actual verse begins فَبَدَّلَ Now from فَبَدَّلَ you get Abdal. I've heard of Abdal. We studied this in Aqeedah and even uh, the tafsir um, Qurtubi and other tafsirs they actually talk about Abdals actually as part of this verse they say this means substitute so the Abdals are very senior figures in the world who are very close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and when one of them uh, passes away they are replaced they are substituted with another so that's why some of those who sinned, they substituted the words. They changed hitta to hinta or even habba like this. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a punishment, He He sent a plague, actually rijzan min as sama from the sky. He sent um, a disease, an illness, a punishment from the sky. And people say it is probably a plague. And 
70,000 people perished as a result in a very short space of time. So this is a punishment that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent. As, again, it's a very simple instruction. Enter this town, but look at the arrogance and the rebelliousness and the treachery. Uh, almost like they hate, they hate this instruction. They hate their God, they hate their Prophet. So this again is, is, one, of, is one of the stories. It's completely unacceptable. Allah, you know, it's, 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 Allah is very, very angry when, when people do this after sending prophet after prophet, miracle after miracle, simple instruction after simple instruction. And then we move to verse 60. And this again, we are talking about uh, one of the stories. وَإِذِسْ تَسْقَى مُوسَى لِقَوْمِهِ فَقُلْنَا دْرِبْ بِعَصَاكَ الْحَجَرِ فَانْفَجَرَتْ مِنْهُ ثْنَتَا عَشْرَتَا عَيْنًا قَدْ عَلِمَ كُلُّ أُنَاسٍ مَشْرَبَهُمْ كُلُوا وَشْرَبُوا مِنْ رِزْقِ اللَّهِ وَلَا تَعَثَوْ فِي الْأَرْضِ مُفْسِدِينَ And remember when Musa asked for water for his people, remember this is part of the asking for water, and Allah says, strike your staff on the stone, and فَانْفَجَرَتْ and the uh, water gushed out. It actually almost like it exploded out. And we've talked about this, how the, 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 the stone had four sides and there were f uh, three springs per side, one spring per, per tribe. Um, and this is also an example how Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam used his stick, his blessed staff, as a means for a miracle. So the stick was like a wasila for the miracle of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he goes against those people who say, you know, dead things can't help. This is the, 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 the dead stick of Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam parted the seas and was the means by which these um, uh, miracles happened, these springs happened. And it is said that even now you could, you could see, you can see the holes in one of the stones there uh, uh, for the springs. Now, th the, the, the reason behind this story uh, is that um, uh, this is when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is punishing uh, a people. Now, um, it's very interesting that I'm going to connect this to a, a story of the Prophet wasallam. There's a hadith by Ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala and that the Prophet actually said, peace and blessings be upon him, people uh, have been denied rain because people said can you please pray for rain? And he said, you have been denied rain because of your refusal to pay zakah. But he still asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he still did salatul istisqa. And when he did, it began to rain and he actually said, it's not raining because of you, it's raining because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do, do, does not want the animals to die. He's angry at you. But he's raining, so you're benefiting from the animals that are now on this earth. And that's why he's causing you rain, because you've got to do the fara'id. You've got to follow his instructions. You've got to, uh, uh, you, you, you've got to listen to your Prophet. And the, the reason there are 12 springs is because you have 12 tribes from Ya'qub alayhi salam. And, you know, Mufassirun say we're looking at maybe 50,000 people per tribe. So it's a, mashallah, a huge number of people. Now we come to verse 61 and again this is uh, the same sort of story where people are complaining about the miracles that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is blessing them with when, it, when food is coming from the sky. وَإِذْ قُلْتُمْ يَا مُوسَىٰ لَنْ نَصْبِرَ عَلَىٰ طَعَامٍ وَاحِدٍ فَدْعُ لَنَا رَبَّكَ يُخْرِجْ لَنَا مِمَّا تُنْبِدُ الْأَرْضُ مِنْ بَقْلِهَا وَقِثَّائِهَا وَفُومِهَا وَعَدَسِهَا وَبَصَلِهَا قَالَ أَتَسْتَبْدِلُونَ الَّذِي هُوَ أَدْنَى بِالَّذِي هُوَ خَيْرٍ إِهْبِطُوا مِصْرًا فَإِنَّ لَكُمْ مَا سَأَلْتُمْ وَضُرِبَتْ عَلَيْهِمُ الظِّلَّةُ وَالْمَسْكَنَةُ وَبَاءُوا بِغَضَبٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ ذَلِكَ بِأَنَّهُمْ كَانُوا يَكْفُرُونَ بِآيَاتِ اللَّهِ وَيَقْتُلُونَ النَّبِيِّينَ بِغَيْرِ الْحَقِّ ذَلِكَ بِمَا عَصَوْ وَكَانُوا يَعْتَدُونَ And remember when you said, O oh Musa, 
we cannot manage on just one type of food so call your Lord make dua to Allah to bring us from the earth its herbs i.e. the green vegetables and its cucumbers and its garlic and some people have translated as grain and its lentils and its onions now I remember someone said to me a long uh, asked a question a long long time ago how many different types of fruit and vegetables are mentioned in the Quran now I remember someone said onions actually and I, I, I saw a lot of people look at each other is onions mentioned in the Quran well here it is you see and Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam says you know he said would you exchange the inferior what is inferior with what is better <coughs> in other words why are you giving up something which is uh, which is less good and less miraculous and uh, for what is better for you and then uh, uh, Allah subhanahu or, or rather Musa alayhi salam says then um, then, then go into go into Egypt or go into another city there's a difference of opinion here if you want this because you have been saved from this but if you want all these foods and rejecting all the miraculous food Allah's blessing you with then go back to the city and and if you do and you will be covered with humiliation and poverty and you and and you will return with Allah's anger and that's exactly what that's exactly what happened because they repeatedly rejected Allah signs and murdered them, murdered their prophets. Can you believe? They murdered their prophets without any right. This is a very, very big sin for any community. And they were constantly committing sins. So again, very, uh, a very treacherous n uh, nation at this time. Uh, and look at the result, look at the punishment they had to actually experience. And verse 62 In the Ladina Amanu. وَالَّذِينَ هَادُوا وَالنَّصَارَى وَالصَّابِئِينَ مَنْ آمَنَ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا فَلَهُمْ أَجْرُهُمْ عِنْدَ رَبِّهِمْ وَلَا خَوْفٌ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا هُمْ يَحْزَنُونَ Certainly those who believe and those who became Jews and Christians and Sabians who believed in Allah in the last day and performed righteous, de righteous deeds for them is a reward from their Lord. They will have nothing to fear and they will not grieve. Now, Sabians are mentioned twice in the Holy Quran. There's not much known about them actually. Obviously Christians and Jews we know. And here they ref they're referred to as a religious group along with the Christians and the Jews. So along with the Ahlul Kitab they are mentioned. And people say they lived in Mesopotamia, maybe southern Iraq and they lived in this area in this area since the second century of the Christian era and people say they became Muslim converts and, and reverts there's a difference of opinion as to exactly what they believe but I don't think anybody says they worshipped any idols they did believe in in one God um, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala his beloved Prophet sallallahu know best so Allah Azza wa Jal is talking about that uh, once you uh, have become Jews and Christians and Sabians you should accept the final messenger when he comes actually and uh, this is the tafsir of this verse actually and once you accept him and you perform the righteous deed then you have nothing to fear actually um, on the day of judgment you'll have nothing to fear and it's a very difficult day for everybody um, belief gives you success in this world and in in the world hereafter and if you know in this world many people suffer from some sort of mental illness or weakness they they have depression and they have difficulty accepting their position and they have anxieties about their future and about the past and like this and this is because they have nothing they have no inner strength they have no inner peace they have no inner resilience they have no inner iman and so they're constantly searching for some sort of uh, inner happiness and you can't get that from money and power and, and hard work like this, no you get it from hope and belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that, that belief can save us in this life and in the life hereafter now Allah Azza wa Jal says وَمَنْ يَبْتَغِي غَيْرَ الْإِسْلَامِ دِينًا فَلَنْ يُقْبَلَ مِنْ وَهُوَ فِي الْآخِرَةِ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ 
Whoever seeks a religion other than Islam, it will never be accepted from him. And in the hereafter, he will be one of the losers. So, um, when our Prophet wasallam started his mission, it was a mission for everybody, for the whole world. And it became a duty for the Christians and the Jews and the Sabians and the Mushriks and the Kuffar to listen to the message and to listen to it sincerely. Because if you listen to it sincerely, then you will accept the message. There are many lessons to be learned here and many examples, some of them very, very horrific actually, uh, very, very powerful examples and images of what's, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, ha has done to those people who uh, completely rejected his guidance and, and slaughtered and martyred his prophets and made a mockery of his teachings and the Prophet's teachings alayhi wasalam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us, protect us, guide us and always keep us rightly guided. Ameen wa akhiru da'wana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Okay, well done everybody. Allah bless you all for attending and allow us to gain guidance from this beautiful and most amazing book, the Holy Quran. Wa akhiru da'wana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Assalamu alaikum. ورحمة الله وبركاته